Today is a uh, an exciting but nerve-wracking day for us. We uh, we are coming to you for once outside the basement. In fact, we are at EAA's Weeks Hangar. We uh, we are working on our spars, and the reason I say nerve-wracking, it's important that the spars are straight because it's kind of backbone of the wing, the spine. Yeah, the spine. So to bend those. We don't have an eight foot break, uh, but we need an eight foot break because as you can see, some of these pieces are quite long. Uh, so EA welcomed us here and said, go to town. Um, the only problem is, is we're trying to figure out this whole concept of radiusing the edge because this edge is not radiused. As you can see, since this has a sharp lip to it, it'll bend it too sharp. So we're creating our own, we're just kind of experimenting it. It's experimental. Uh, <laughs> with the radius, we made ourselves a little, we're calling it a sacrificial piece. And we're going to slide that under there, and now we actually have a radius there. So we're doing a little test piece. We'll slide this under there. And we're going to see how much of a radius that puts on that edge. Because now that corner will be less sharp. So, we're locked. I love how we're using an 8-foot break for these 6-inch pieces. Yeah. Well, we're going to be needing the full money here in a minute. Here we're comparing the two... Uh, the two radiuses. This is the one we did without any kind of sacrificial piece of metal in between there buffering it. This piece is the one we did with a sacrificial piece buffering it. And as you can see, there's not as much of a radius as we thought there would be by having an extra piece of metal in there. And uh, But Caleb has a theory and I think he's right. So I think, I have a theory. I think the reason why the uh, bend, there's no difference in the bend, is because right now the way we have the brake set up, the top lip is right the same forward distance as the bottom lip. There's no extra space in there, there's no setback. So when we bend the two together, we're basically just crushing them together. If we put a little setback, so we have the back piece farther back behind the bottom piece, then as we bend it, it'll just kind of wrap our real piece around the sacrificial piece. It won't crush them together. And ideally it would be 32 thousandths setback. Right? Because um, that would be the width of the metal that we're now putting in there is the buffer. You could try that. Okay, test number two. Uh, this is the one without any, that was our original, without any buffer. This is the one with buffer and setback. And as you can see, the radius is a much smoother radius than here. So a little more radius there than there. That's a better bend for us. So we're gonna keep experimenting, but we're getting close. Number three, test piece. And as you can see, sacrifice is in place. And this one, we added a little more setback. The first one, we did no setback. Then we did a little setback, and that made it a little better. And this is twice the setback, and we're going to see how it does. Okay, clamper down. Yeah, that's tight up against it. Is that tight? Go. Right. Try, just try to get a 90, just it makes it easier to compare. Right. It seems like with a, there we go, That's good. with a larger radius, it has a little more spring back. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of radius. A lot? Too much? I don't know what too much is. It's supposed to have a 16th inch. That's definitely better. It looks good. Okay, here are the results of test number three. This is with no sacrificial piece and no setback. This is with a sacrificial piece and then what we're calling two setback, <laughs> which is our, you know. About an eighth of an inch. Yeah, and as you can see, that is a much better radius. So I am pleased with that. I don't know exactly what it is, but it looks like a good healthy radius, but not too healthy, <laughs> perfectly healthy, not obese. <laughs> Not anorexic, right in the middle. Just like us. Yeah. Lock that in. Okay, so now we're trying to fine tune, you know, our distance measuring of where the bend's actually going to be, because we need this distance to be pretty precise. Um, so what we did, the uh, the aileron uh, spar here is supposed to be three and thirteenth sixteenth. So we added just a fudge factor of one sixteenth. When we actually bent it, as you can see, it's uh, it's two too big so too much so we're actually going to gonna go back and uh, do test number two and try to get this to be smaller that way we know how much fudge factor we need to put in there so we can bend our spars to the precise measurement that we want 
bend the other flange. It's pretty good. Pretty. Look at that. That's what we're going for on the full size. That's our goal. It's, it's not tight, but it's snug. It's snug. It holds its own. And we want to get that. So, so Caleb's measuring system of where to put the line in conjunction with where to put it on the brake, we're able to get an accurate width for this spar. That, you know, it's not too big, it's not too small. It's just right. Are we ready for uh, a okay. real one? Well, the, the reason we picked this specific size, notice it's small, is this is the uh, aileron spar, which is the shortest one. The smallest one, so if we make a mistake on the first one, it'll be the least amount of material wasted. But we're about to bend our first real spar. I think we're ready. We just have to draw lines on this guy. While Caleb's doing that, I'm over here playing with these granddaddy tin snips, one of the benefits of uh, coming over here to Weeks to work. And with these granddaddy snips, I am going to be cutting out our sacrificial eight-foot piece that we're using to help radius the edge so we can do a real one. Oh, granddaddy snips. Granddaddy snips give you big granddaddy forearms. <laughs> so, we are about to make our first real bend in a real spar. Hopefully it's real straight. Yeah, so we're starting with the small one. Yep, the aileron one, the smallest. So, uh, here we go. Look at that. Our first real bend wow and it is perfect i don't know if you can see but i am just beaming right now caleb is happy and so am i that looks really good that does look good caleb <laughs> yeah it's such a simple thing but a straight bend a straight bend makes you really happy that's fantastic Woo. okay let's do the other side okay so we just bent what's going to be our bottom flange and that's just about 90 degrees but now this top one we actually have to go beyond 90 degrees because it's facing towards the back of our wing and at this point on the wing the wing is sloping down and away so we're gonna actually bend uh, a little beyond 90. Here's the triple check and the diagnosis is perfect. We've got our line marks but I figured one last check we just measure from the edge out to our flange Three. where we did. Three and thirteenth, sixteenth. Yep, we're just one sixteenth beyond three quarters. Um, He's speechless. We have a spar. <laughs> it's a boy. No, uh, this is actually incredibly exciting right now because um, we got our angle in here just right, perfect height, perfect little flange. It fits snug. It's not too tight. It's snug. And so, uh, you know, we're not making... Airplane noises yet, but I can sit here and right aileron, left aileron. Actually, be. <laughs> but this is our aileron, so we can pretend to be flying right now. So, this will be the spar for our aileron ribs, fit inside of the nose rib. We'll go up there, but uh, we have a nice straight spar. We took our time, and I am ecstatic. This is a, a wonderful feeling.